Hi, welcome to Atlassian Demos. Today you'll be seeing a demo for how Confluence Cloud supercharges cross-functional collaboration. We hope you enjoy. Hey everyone, my name is Delani Kawala. I'm a PM in the Confluence team. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about how Confluence Cloud can help give you superpowers when it comes to cross-functional collaboration. So we're all here to build beautiful products and bring those beautiful products to our customers. Beautiful products happen when people with deep expertise and knowledge of their craft come together and form a team and bring all of that talent and craft into forming one product. And that requires very healthy, effective cross-functional collaboration. Now, before we get into how to do this well, it's important to understand how your organizational setup can have an impact on this. So at a high level, there are two kinds of organizations. One is divisional, where people in different functions, say product, engineering, marketing, report to a single business leader. And these uh, organizations tend to be faster, they make quick decisions. Um, however, they can also become siloed and result in lower product quality as each individual team optimizes for their own goals. And then there are functional organizations where people in a single discipline, like engineering, for example, report in a single line. And these organizations have a huge focus on craft because people can coach each other. There's shared knowledge. There is a deep focus on craft and perfection. And the products that come out of these um, functional organizations can be really beautiful and perfected and consistent because you can have things like a shared design language, which we have at Atlassian here. And you can have things like platform components, um, like the editor that is in Confluence and our other products. And all of that comes because there are these functional experts who really care about their craft. Um, the downside of functional organizations is that they can be slow at scale because you have to bring these different experts into a single team to work on a product. The communication overhead um, and, and the organizational effort that it takes to coordinate everything can feel overwhelming. So what I'm going to talk to you today about isn't some magic pill to make that go away, but one emphasize that if you are in such an organization, you are really well set up to benefit from this craft and quality that, that these experts can bring to your product, but you have to invest in bringing people together and you have to invest in coordination and communication. And what I hope to give you are some insights into how to do that more effectively and efficiently so it doesn't feel like that's the only thing you're doing. All right, so the reason why I got interested in this topic was that last year, um, I was part of a very successful product launch when we launched the Confluence Public Template Gallery. We had over 10 cross-functional teams working on this concept to launch. It took only three months and the launch actually exceeded our expectations. And when I stepped back to understand what went so well here, the main reason um, th that became obvious was that we had a really effective cross-functional collaboration happening. And so what I did was I stepped back to figure out what went so well. And I talked to all of my cross-functional partners to understand from their perspective, what went well there and what are the pain points that they experience otherwise. So putting all of that together, what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is some of the pain points that, that come up when you're in this kind of collaboration mode. Um, I'll share some of my lessons and weave those into five tips that will make life a lot easier for you when you're in these kinds of very extensive cross-functional teams. And I will tell you how Confluence can really help you do a lot of the heavy lifting. 
Okay, so let's get into it. I'm gonna start with the pain point. So I'm a product manager, so I'm in a tech team and our core teams, typically product design engineering, and we partner with other cross-functional partners like marketing, data science, support, and so on. Um, and, and so very commonly, some of the pain points that we hear from the perspective of these core teams is that your cross-functional partners don't seem as passionate about your problem. Sometimes they're missing context and your project doesn't never seems to get prioritized in that giant list. And, you know, people just aren't aligned on what are you trying to achieve? What is the goal you're all aiming for? And what is the timeline? But when I talk to, talk to my cross-functional partners, I heard some very clear pain points from them. There were four themes that came out. One, they feel like they're often treated like a service. If you go to a data scientist and ask for a specific number, instead of telling them, explaining to them what is the problem you're trying to solve and let them come to you with the best way to solve that, it doesn't help them bring the best of their craft to you. Um, and, and they feel very limited in, in their ability to really do something meaningful and contribute to the success of your product. The second one is they're not brought in early enough. If you go to marketing, your marketing partner and ask them just to write the final PR plan or the communications plan, you really missed out on the opportunity for them to have shaped how this product could have been positioned to customers from the very beginning and how that impacts even some of the product decisions you make. The third one is expertise being undervalued. So an example here would be being, bringing research doing research, use the research just to take a box and not having the insights from that research actually reflect in the product decisions you make. And finally, and this is a common one, just having lack of clarity on what are we aiming for? When are we trying to do this by and who owns what? So when I think about the pain points, these pain points on both sides, What's clear is there, there's a human problem, but there's also a process problem. And, and we need to solve both to make cross-functional collaboration work effectively. So let's talk about the human problem first. This is all about having an inspiration, a vision to aim for, feeling like you're part of something bigger and belonging and a feeling of belonging, feeling like you're part of a team and you're supported and cared for, and people really care about what you bring to the table. Um, one of the quotes that I found ex explains this really well was from Reid Hoffman. Um, and he said, it takes more than a logo to rally the troops. You need an elevated mission and everyday human contact to unite a team. So if you take nothing else away from this talk, just remember that to bring people together and help them feel inspired and help them feel belonging. Now, of course, this applies to any team, your core team, but what's special about these cross-functional partners that you work with is it's, it's harder. You don't have rituals that you share with them. You don't have as much face time with them. So you have to go that extra mile to build those relationships and make people feel like they're part of the team and invested in the thing that you're trying to do. Everything else, there's confluence. So let's get right to the top five tips that are gonna help you breeze through that process part of the problem. So as I go through this, I'm going to share my tip, but I'm also gonna tell you some confluence templates that you can use that will help you structure a lot of this. And I'll also share some Atlassian plays that will guide you step-by-step step through some of these hairier, more complex, team rituals and processes that you need to have set up. So tip one, have a big vision and have a joint vision. When we pitched the template gallery, we didn't just look at it, what it would look like for the first year. We looked at what would this product look like in year one and year two, and what would this product look like when the whole Atlassian product suite is represented. And we also developed this vision with the marketing team and we pitched it jointly. And that made such a huge difference from the beginning because everybody was bought into it. They were excited about it. And that set the tone for the whole time that we were working together, super important. 
Second one, have an OKR and have a deadline. With the template gallery, we knew what a good outcome looked like and we quantified it. And if you can quantify it, that's very powerful. And we also knew what an amazing outcome looked like. Coupled with that, we had a timeline. It's easy to kick the deadline down the road, but the stricter you can be with the timeline, the more it will help you focus and prioritize. So you really identify what's critical, what's nice to have, and what is a fast follow. And it helps you figure out very quickly up front what are you missing to make that happen? Third one, plan well, but escalate quickly. When you have that OKR and deadline, you can work backwards. So we work backwards for the template gallery week by week to know what we needed to have in place. And we had regular check-ins with the whole cross-functional team. But still along the way, there were moments where two people or two teams couldn't make a clear decision because they did not have oversight of both. Er there wasn't a single person in that team who had oversight of both areas. So one thing we did effectively that I'm really proud of is we wrote a joint proposal, outlined the options, we call it a DACI, and we took it to the leader who had overview of both areas and we resolved it very quickly. Don't let things fester. Bring it to the light of day, talk through it, resolve it and move on. Help people do what they love as much as you can. And this is all about that giving people, feeling making pe people feel inspired, finding meaning in the work they do and help them feel like they you care for them. We had a content designer who was really passionate about researching HR and design templates. So she went and recruited uh, people, she conducted these interviews and the templates that came out at the end were amazing. Uh, that's not necessarily how we would have done it otherwise, but the fact that she was able to do that and have that latitude really meant she was felt like very invested and the outcome was far beyond what we, we could have had otherwise. Finally, get out of the way. Uh, your cross-functional partners are experts in what they do. I'll agree on the final goal, be very clear about it, have regular checkpoints to check in on progress. But in the middle, in between those things, let them do their job. They might not do it the way you do it, but that's okay. So those are the five tips. All the templates that I talked about are available in the Confluence editor inside the template panel. You can search for them. There are recommended templates. You can filter them. So go check them out. You can also find them in the top navigation in the template gallery. So take a look. All of the Atlassian plays that I talk about are in the team playbook. They're available in our website and they do an amazing job of guiding you through step-by-step step some of these processes that you should have in place with your team. And a few features that are coming soon that will supercharge this even more. We're gonna help you see all of your comments at once. So when your cross-functional partners give you feedback, you'll be able to see that all at once instead of having to click through one by one. We're going to give you reactions so that your comments can be much more live and the conversation can be dynamic and more engaging. And we'll also give you the ability to put emojis in your title and put cover images on your pages so that you know those vision pages and strategy pages that you make can really pop and help convey the story you're trying to tell. So cross-functional collaboration can sometimes feel like you're riding this bike and there's someone at the back doing a science experiment and there's a wall being built in front of you, usually by another team. But what I want to emphasize is if you're in a functional organization, your cross-functional functional partners can really bring a lot of craft and quality to your product. But to do that, you have to invest in bringing people together, help people feel inspired, help people feel belonging. But I hope that five tips I shared with you and the Confluence features that you can use will do a lot of the heavy lifting for you so that you can focus on the people side and less on the process side. Thank you and good luck with all of your future cross-functional uh, projects.